Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and we're gonna be providing an update to the bull market support band. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. I am still somewhat sick, but I'll put out a very quick video tonight. Um, as of this week, the bull market support band is ranging from 28,742 to 28,904. So it's more or less right below 29K. Um, so Bitcoin would have to drop about 15% just to get back to the bull market support band after the pretty explosive move we saw last week that took Bitcoin you know, basically from 30K up to around $35,000. Now, I did wanna mention a couple of things. Um, you know, We talked a few weeks ago about the idea of Bitcoin getting a, a rally after the death cross, okay? Now, it led to a higher high, right? It was not a lower high, it led to a higher high. And we talked about one of the reasons why we get a rally after a death cross is because the death cross, which tends to make headlines, tells you what already happened, right? I mean, it already tells you that the price went down. And then people sell on that headline and then the price goes up. Coincidentally, we just had a golden cross where the 50 day has crossed above the 200 day. And what history tends to show us after a golden cross is you normally go down first. That doesn't mean that it has to happen. There are periods in history where, you know, after a death cross price goes down or after a golden cross price goes up. But um, just like we talked about the death cross, and how price normally goes up after a death cross in the short term. Uh, I would at least mention that we now have a golden cross, but it doesn't necessarily mean anything. It tells you what you already know, like price went up a lot, and that's why the shorter term moving average is above the longer term moving average. Um, and the last time we had a golden cross was back over here in, in, in February. And after that golden cross, you can see that price dropped about about eight or nine percent or so. Um, for reference, an eight or nine percent drop from these levels would put Bitcoin at around 31K or so, uh, just for, for reference. So um, do be aware of that. Um, regardless, I mean, I, I think the bigger thing, you know, is, is if and when Bitcoin gets a pullback, I mean, assuming it will at some point, the this area will of course be what everyone's watching right like does does this zone turn into support right you break out of a range does it turn into support or is it more just a um sort of a, a deviation outside of it to only come back in so i think that's what a lot of people will be watching who knows when it actually happens right whether it's this week or next week or um you know two weeks or three weeks from now whatever i, I don't know when it'll occur but I, I do think that will be an important test to see does that 31K level hold or, or does it not. Uh, so do be aware that we just got a golden cross. Um, and normally you see price dump into it, right? This was like an 8 or 9% drop. Um, we also saw a drop here. But I believe it occurred... Yeah, I mean, you can see like on the day of the Golden Cross, price closed on the day of the Golden Cross up about 5%. And then we basically went sideways for a few days. And then from that level, we got about a 19% a drop, right? A 19% a 19 drop would actually get you back below the range highs uh, from, the, from the summer. So, and again, you can go back and look at, at, at prior Golden Crosses and, 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 and see which ones... Um, you know, this one like had a sell off of about 14, 15 percent um, and so on and so forth. And so I think that's what you look, you look for. Right. We have a golden cross. Do we get the pretty typical pullback that you get with a golden cross? And if we do, does 31K hold? If 31K does not hold, does the bull market support ban hold? Which, again, is, is just below twenty nine thousand dollars. I know a lot of people are, are looking at the momentum and, and hoping for higher prices and you know, look, guys, this was an explosive move. Who knows how high uh, it can ultimately go. I will, you know, I will sort of go back to that previous idea that we've, we've talked about. And that was um, the year-to-date ROI of Bitcoin 
in 2023, potentially going as high as 2.1x off the yearly open, which it's now at, right? If you average out 2015 and 2019, right? That's basically at that level, 2.1x off the yearly open. Um, so we are at that level. And I mean, you can see that there have been some pretty sizable corrections in November. So, um, you know, and again, like as, as the golden cross back in what 2021 showed, you doesn't mean you have to get the, the correction immediately, right? There could be a, a continued trend higher for a couple more days before it goes down. But what we've seen oftentimes in, in November is some type of, of a pullback, right? We got to know, we got to, I mean, it seems like almost every single November to be completely honest. Will this time be different? Who knows, right? It was a green September, so who knows? But 2022, uh, a big drop in in November. 2021, pretty big drop in November. 2020 was the exception, right? November was green. 2019, pretty big drop in November. 2018, pretty, pretty big drop in November, and uh, so on and so forth. 2017, that was, again, the exception. Right where it went up. That was the, the um, sort of the blow off top of of a two two and a half year bull market or so. This was a blow off top of you know a bull market that really got kicked off after the after the pandemic drop. So we'll see what transpires in November. Do be aware though that that does uh, tend to be a, a sort of a risk off time for Bitcoin, and, um, and so we'll see how that plays out. I also do want to mention. Um, you know, I don't, you know, a lot of people talk about the RSI and um, I don't really put a whole lot of weight into it, which is why you don't typically see me talk about it. I can't tell you how many people told me that Bitcoin dominance was going to top out at 52% because of the RSI. And here it is at 54%, right? I mean, so, you know, it, it shows you just how, how weak the RSI can be. Um, but just for completeness, I did want to at least mention that the weekly RSI for Bitcoin just reached above 70. Um, so some people will say, you know, 70 or above is overbought, 30 and below is oversold. Um, the reason why that's interesting is, you know, that getting to that 70 level is, that's actually right where the S&P went, right? It went right above 70 back in, back in July and then, and then it dropped. So far, Bitcoin has ignored that move, right? It's completely ignored the drop by the S&P 500 so far, right? We'll see if it can continue to ignore it or not. But I think that is also something relevant to look at in the coming weeks is, is does Bitcoin continue to, to sort of crank higher uh, despite other markets dropping quickly? You know, the S&P continues to drop pretty quickly. And, and of course, other, other financial markets as well. And, and, you know, can Bitcoin continue to weather that storm? So that's what we'll watch. Any major pullbacks, the bull market support ban is, again, at just below $29,000. So that would be where the bulls would like to hold support if they are unable to hold at, at 31K. So those are levels, I think, to be watching in the coming weeks. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.